Mike Brearley, commiserations, bad luck. You can't win them all. After 16 test matches, you've suffered defeat for the first time, but you are a philosopher. I suppose you have to look at it philosophically. Well, I think anyone who plays cricket does. There's no, <laughs> uh, no special uh, corner for that. It was a good performance by the Australians. Where do you think it was won and lost, if any particular place? I think on the first day, I think it was turned out to be a good toss to win uh, because I think uh, that the pitch played better that day than the rest of the match. But um, they scored 240 for three, for four on the first day, and that, that was the difference, really. You have been very critical of this pitch, or perhaps you've been uh, unjustly criticised for your comments. Would well, you like yes, to enlarge on them? Well, I would, because what's annoying is that I said after the second day that I thought that it wasn't too good a wicket for a test match since it was keeping so low and so much varying height on the second day. And then people say uh, in the papers, you know, they didn't mention the fact that I qualified this in various ways and said, I know they've had bad weather and um, we also had the better of the pitches in the other two test matches, I thought. I mean, it suited us better than Australia. Um, and then it comes out as really blast pitch and so on. Well, I wasn't blasting the pitch. I was just saying that I think it was a bit variable in bounce by the second day of the match for a test match. And I would stand by that. This was borne out by the fact that seven of your players were at LBW. Uh, a lot of balls keeping low? Yes, and um, I should think probably another three or four the ball going underneath the bat and being bowled. Mm. You in particular are having a bad run at the moment. Mike. It happens to all test cricketers at mm -hmm. some stage. Uh, mm -hmm. 36 runs in, 37 runs in six innings. Um, not too bright, is it? <laughs> well, how do you get out of it? Do you, will you continue to open or not? Well, um, you see, this is a sort of <laughs> ignorant comment that you have to put up with. But um, I reckon that you can consider a captain as an all-rounder. That's the first thing. I mean, yeah. there's other people to judge what sort of a job I'm or anyone else is doing in yes. that department. Um, obviously, I'd like to score some runs. Anyone would. Um, we've got a selection committee. We'll talk about all aspects of the side, who's going to open the batting and, and everything. And that's up to the selection committee. But I'm uh, fully intending to play. Looking at the Australian side, Rodney Hogg's performance was outstanding. Yes, I, I think I'll say again what I've said about him before, that it's remarkable that in such a short period of time, he's... He's learned how to bowl on so many different pitches, and he bowls so intelligently. I mean, he's obviously got great ability, but he, blow, he uses that ability superbly. I take my hat off to him. Bob Willis was the spearhead of your first two victories. What mm -hmm. happened to him in this particular match? Well, he's a very different sort of bowler from Rodney Hogg. I mean, he's very high, and he, uh, if the ball bounces, he's a very awkward proposition. Um, whereas Rodney is much more of a skiddy, skiddy bowler, and I think on this pitch, uh, Rodney was a, 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 a sort of probably a better bet. But, I mean, our, our other lads bowled superbly, I thought, and stuck at their task very well. We got back into the game after being 115 runs behind on the first day. We really got back into the game. They must have been pretty worried when we were 160 before. Mm. And there were quite a few good things from our, our point of view as well. Well, you're still one up with three to go. Mm -hmm, quite Best right. of luck for the rest of the Thank series. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Mike, Mike Reilly. And that, that was England's captain, Mike Reilly.